Hello, World of Warships world, and welcome to a tier list video. The type of video that any self-respecting YouTube channel desperately needs. Um, I don't know. My channel being the premier address for amazing World of Warships content, of course, needs one as well. I know I'm a bit late to the party here. Usually tier lists are released at the beginning of the year, I think. It's like, which cruiser you need to grind in 2024? Or shit like that. Um, but yeah, my tier list is, um, of course, more important and better than all those tier lists. Anyway, um, don't let these ships down here fool you. I just hijacked another tier list that already existed. Today we are going to make a tier tier list. And we're going to begin at tier 1. Uh, which is where all uh, of us began their World of Warships journey, unless they bought an RB Yamato and began at Tier 10, in which case, thank you for keeping the service running. But we're going to begin at Tier 1, and uh, for me, I still have fond memories of playing Eerie, um, and I should probably mention some nice ships at each tier that I enjoy playing, just because it's my video and you're in my world now. Um, so back in the day tier one ships used to have ap now what days they don't for some reason i don't know why they took it away from them i think uh, it took away from tier one enjoyment i mean it's not like my understanding as limited as it may be of when to use ap shells uh, is going to give me a huge advantage at tier one because all the new players are going to be in protected matchmaking and if i wreck someone's broadside with AP, um, well, and they have a thousand games, they deserve it, right? It's not like I'm seal clubbing down there. So, yeah, that's that's kind of sad. Also, uh, I should say that tier 1, 2, 3, 4, and to a lesser extent tier 5 all suffer from being uh, graced or plagued uh, by bots and that can lead to very quick games when the bots decide to ram which wargaming wasn't able to fix even though they said they were i think in 10.6 or something um years ago um and if one team has the beefier bots that ram the others to death the game can spiral out of control really quickly um, i'm gonna put tier one at c tier i think it's a c tier tier um it's it's where it belongs it's it's not d as in dumpster tier but it certainly isn't any higher than this uh, tier two though is uh, certainly better than tier one it's a step up because well, not just because it's a higher number um, but also because it's it has more variety um there's a lot of very shit cruisers at tier two yes but there's destroyers and i guess mikasa <laughs> um so there's more variety and that is a good thing there's enjoyable ships like the smith with its 9.5 second torpedo reload or whatever it is it's great fun i like to play it occasionally um, there's also a lot of tier 2 mains like go to the leaderboards on wow's numbers or whatever and uh, check the stats for yumikaze and sort by number of games um, there's a lot of them and yeah, I think it's it's a better tier than tier 1, but it's still not not levels of B tier, so um, it's also a C tier tier for me, uh, so I'm, I'm going to put it here. Tier 3 uh, has the St. Louis, the first ship that I really enjoyed in World of Warships. Um, huge HP pool, it has turtleback armor to prevent citadels from other cruisers, has loads of guns, um, it doesn't have AA to speak of, it's very slow, but it doesn't matter. I enjoy putting my 21 point dedicated St. Louis captain on my St. Louis, well, I guess it's it's there already anyway, uh, because it's dedicated St. Louis captain, but um, I enjoy playing St. Louis. If I want to go to a low tier and just blow up some ships, I will go to tier 3 and play St. Louis. So, um, to me, tier 3 is a B tier sure you will encounter cvs occasionally occasionally and you don't have aa but i can live with that but um since i've already mentioned uh, cvs and tier 4 is the next tier tier 4 is where the cv menace uh, begins it's where people try out cvs and there's a lot of double cv games on on the eu server at least that's what it feels like to me and 
It's really oppressive. You're spotted all the time. It's annoying. Even if you play something strong like a Clemson, which is really nice boat to play. Everyone should play Clemson occasionally. Um, yeah, being perma spotted by CVs, not a nice experience. Also, CVs ruined Nikolai, right? Nikolai was such a good boat to play. It, it's still strong, don't get me wrong, but not as nice it, as it used to be. And uh, I'm going to put a tier six, a tier, sorry, tier four at D tier. Um, I just don't like it. I never liked it. Probably because I went from St. Louis to Phoenix and it's such a different ship and I didn't understand how to play it. Um, but yeah, I think tier four, D tier. D tier tier. Uh, tier five, though, is much better. Firstly, all the, the new players are coming out of protected matchmaking to get their first taste of a real gameplay. And that's good because you can play ships like Julio and Death Strike all the Omahas that you're going to encounter. Uh, or you can play Fujin, Kamikaze, Kamikaze R, and just uh, murder all those poor battleships that come out of protected matchmaking. Great tier. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what to say. Of course, there's also non-overpowered premium ships, like uh, normal tech tree ships, like the Furutaka, which 203s and a decent armor scheme and hard-hitting torps, which is very good for tier 5. Uh, so you don't have to have a crazy overpowered ship. You can play Furutaka, for example. Or I guess you can play Königsberg, if you know how to hide. Very high DPM. Um, Nicholas, very high DPM for its tier. So yeah, uh, I like tier 5. It's a great tier. And even though the matchmaker in terms of up tiering, down tiering is unfavorable, I think tier 5 is an A tier. Um, this this is my opinion and, and you should share it. It's, it's the right opinion here. Um, at tier 6, um, fondly remembered of course, for having been the tier where the best clan battle season of all time was held. Um, which is funny because what made that clan battle season so controversial, i.e. the CVs, is probably the least oppressive at tier 6, at least in my opinion. Um, at tier 4 there's just so many of them. And tier 8, 10 and super ship tier, I think the CVs are worse than they are at tier 6. Um, which is not to say the ships have strong AA to defend themselves, it's just unless you're a destroyer against a Leuvenhard, I feel like the CV is is not as big of a problem at tier 6. Tier 6 also has some other nice ships other than Leuvenhard. Uh, for example, the T61, best DD at tier 6. Um, Farragut, if you want a tech tree ship, crazy DPM for its tier and the Perth, for example, which was part of the recent uh, event um, for the Battle of the Java Sea, and you could get the Perth for free. It has so many tools. It's such a quirky ship. I really like the Perth. Um, I also like the Nuremberg, also crazy DPM. I think highest of all cruisers at tier 6. German pen, as long as nobody shoots you, um, great ship. Yeah, tier 6 is a great tier. Um, is it A tier? It's a high B tier. Uh, I'm going to put it at high B tier for now. Um, probably because submarines start at tier 6. If submarines didn't exist, I would put it at A tier. But tier 6 is the first submarine tier, so I'm going to put it into B tier. Uh, tier 7 is the tier with the best ship in the game, which is the Atlanta, as we all know. Um, and yeah, I don't know why I enjoy my Atlanta more than my Belfast, for example. Tier 7 does suffer a bit, or not just a bit, it does suffer from um, having to play against tier 8s and 9s every now and then. And tier 8s, of course, get access to the next module or upgrade or whatever it's called slot, where most ships are going to slot the stealth upgrade, the concealment upgrade. Um, so that's a bit of a problem. Um, but yeah, I I quite enjoy tier 7, I have to say. Um, I'm going to put it into B tier. I think it's better than tier 3, but I enjoy tier 6 more. 
Uh, I will put it there. Yes, you you will not have a fun time if you play against tier nines, uh, but you will have a very fun time if you play against tier fives. I think so. Uh, it's a B tier tier for me. Tier eight. Um, so many great ships. It has the Musashi. Uh, sorry, uh, the Massachusetts. Musashi comes next here. Uh, it has the Massachusetts. It has the Enterprise. It has the Mines. Um, and Mines, of course, is the king of operations. And tier 8 is currently the highest tier you can play in operations. Mines being the best ship for it. Um, you can farm an absurd amount of credits. Captain XP, free XP there. And that makes it a very good tier. Uh, also, I mentioned those other ships, Massachusetts, for example. Uh, if you're Massachusetts and you're playing against tier sixes, you can just walk down a flank and nobody's ever going to stop you. Great fun, great fun. And if you're up tier into tier 10, there's no pressure on you. Nobody expects anything. And you cannot see super ships. Tier 8 is easy as tier tier. Um, not much else to say there, really. Everyone should play more tier 8s. Um, tier 9 also has some good ships, Usashi, I already kind of spoiled that, um, but also Alaska or Kronstadt or Benham, and yes, I put Kronstadt in there because I like it more than Alaska, sue me if you want, but um, I would like to see more clan battle stuff happen at tier 9, even though the ban list or restriction list is probably a problem there. Um, I also enjoy Tier Sarge at Tier 9, now that I think about it. Even though my win rate is shit, but I enjoy Tier Sarge. Um, yeah, the, the restriction list would have to be quite extensive because of all those ships that have been removed from sale because they were too good uh, or too popular or whatever. Um, uh, but yeah, Tier 9 is a very good tier. I like it. Um, it also has the best credit earning potential for Tier 9 premiums. So I'm going to put Tier 9 into a tier. I think it's not quite as good as tier 5, but it certainly it deserves to be an A tier tier. Tier 10. Uh, tier 10 sucks, I think we can all agree on that. And for me it's mostly this attitude of, oh someone made a great play at tier 6, well it doesn't count, it's just tier 6. Only tier 10 counts. Like, there's no point in playing anything else than tier 10. Tier 10 is, is the only valid tier. And I don't share the sentiment, so uh, I, I don't like this. And tier 10 has this weird mix of tryhards and of people who are really bad at the game. And they want to get to tier 10 as quickly as possible because they think them performing poorly is not their the, the fault is not lie, doesn't lie with them, the fault lies with the ship. And so they think, oh yes, I I am playing poorly in my Fuso, but just you wait until I get my hands on Yamato. I will be unstoppable. And they get to Yamato and they are not unstoppable, but they feel strong. Um, and yeah, it's this mix of tryharding and clueless people who think they're good because they made it to tier 10. Um, I don't like the tier. I think it's still better than tier 1 or tier 2, would be unfair to lump it in with them, but it's easily the worst B tier tier in the game. And then we have the super ship tier, uh, S stands for super, of course, so we are going to put it into D tier, because that's where it belongs. Uh, I don't know why it exists really, I don't think uh, it is a credit drain for experienced players because I don't think it works if, if it was intended as that. Um, I don't see the point in the tier. Some of the ships are barely an improvement over the tier 10s. Some of them should honestly be tier 13s. And for some reason, super ships attract bad players. I don't know. If, maybe it's just confirmation bias because a stat check super ship players who perform particularly poorly, but it feels like uh, tragically bad players are attracted to super ships and then you have those people who have a I don't know 35% solo win rate at tier 10 and they drive around in an Annapolis and that also can lead to lopsided matches um, when both super ship players or all super ship players are shit that's one thing right 
But if one team has an Annapolis player who has, I don't know, 65% solo win rate at tier 10, um, yeah, that's not as bad as the old CVs, but if one team has a very powerful ship in very capable hands and one team has a very powerful ship in the hands of an absolute potato, um, that's almost going to predetermine the outcome of the match. So I really don't like, I really don't like the super ship tier. I think it's pointless, it shouldn't exist, and uh, that's why it's the worst tier in World of Warships. And this is uh, the complete tier list, tier 8, the best tier, tier 5 and tier 9, very good, 6, 7, 3 and 10 are okay, uh, 2 and 1 are not not really good, and uh, tier 4 and the super ship tier are absolute trash and... Mm. I guess we cannot delete tier 4 from the game, but maybe we can start with super ships, right? And that's it for today and uh, for this video, the uh, tier tier list for World of Warships. You're welcome.